Hello everybody, welcome to the Tribulation Institute. My name is Jeff Forster. I'm your host today and every day at the Tribulation Institute. In the last broadcast, I talked about what, what's the tribu what's it all about? What's the tribulation? Why is the tribulation uh, in the book of, uh, book of Revelation? Uh, we know that the book of Revelation is a revealing of Yahshua, Jesus the Son of God, in the end days, at the end, at the last day, to set up his kingdom. That the Bible uh, says that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's the head of the church, the body of, of Yahshua, of Christ in the earth. He sits at the right hand of the Father until his enemies are made his footstool. Okay? And so, uh, all of this is about the revealing of him, okay, at the end. Well, the revealing of him... There's a, he's more than the head. He, he's the head, sits the right hand of the Father, and we believers in him, in his death, burial, and resurrection, after repentance from our sins, we are his body in the earth. We are his body. We are, we are in him. So the tribulation is for us. Okay? And he's going to start judging his church first before he judges the world. I'll point down here to the, uh, uh, to the chapter 14 of the book of Revelation that corresponds to the opening of the first seal and the rider on the white horse. So is this rider has gone forth conquering uh, since Passover, uh, which speaks of the Passover lamb, Yahshua, uh, back March 13th. I, I mean, not March 10th. Uh, that was the president when he announced this, <laughs> this uh, medical uh, emergency. But Passover, last uh, March 28th, 2021. Today is February 1st. Or did I say that already? But anyway. So, it's for his church. The tribulation is for them to uh, 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 wake up, realize what Babylon is, and come out of Babylon. Okay? Or partake of the plagues that Yah is sending on Babylon. And he's judging his church to see how they react and the world to how they react to these plagues that are coming. Just like in the, uh, uh, the book of Exodus when Moses was going to lead uh, the Hebrew people. And we are then manifest today as believers in Yahshua out of the bondage that they were in in Egypt. America being the type of Egypt or more precisely the daughter of Babylon. Okay, in the end days that we must come out of to do what? Make his enemies his footstool so that he can return and set his kingdom up. So the tribulation is not, you know, okay, he's judging the world and he will bring wrath on the world. But that tribulation is what? The revealing of his remnant. The church without spot and wrinkle that comes on the scene as the man child at the seventh seal, the beginning of the last three and a half years. And so this first part that we're in right now is for his church, his bride, to make herself ready for his return. So, judge yourself as I judge myself. Where do we stand in that? I know the church hasn't been teaching uh, these things, um, but... Let me let me read something. Let me excuse me one second. I had to get my glasses here real quick because I can't read that my glasses. I'm reading out of Isaiah eleven. Verse four. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Uh, we'll move to verse uh, 9. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse. We know that that's Yahshua. Jesus, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it 
shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day, now listen to this, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam, which is Iran, and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah, Jews, shall be cut off. Ephraim, that's the house of uh, the ten northern tribes, the house of Israel, uh, Ephraim, uh, one of uh, Manasseh and Ephraim being the sons of Joseph, Ephraim shall not envy Judah, nor Judah shall not vex Ephraim. So, again, the second time, he will bring his people. His people are those that believe in him. You know, he brought the Hebrews out, uh, which were his people, that, that he brought. If you think, well, just all Christians, this, this is going to happen to you. It's not. But all the Hebrews that came out of uh, the land of Egypt, when Pharaoh let them go, is only two in the descendants of those two original, out of probably two million somewhat, Joseph and Caleb, who when they went into the promised land, they gave a good report saying, the giants, we can conquer them. God says, this is our land. And so they gave a good report. We agree with God. Even though we're grasshoppers to the giants, it's all going to happen again. But they went in and conquered the land. Well, in the end days, that land is going to be, the land is the same, Israel, from the Nile to the Euphrates. That's not going to change. But right now, it's just a little splinter. So again, the second time, and he says, this will be more, you will never even, rem it will never come to your mind again about the first time that I brought my people out, okay? Because the second time is more miraculous. Why? Because it's scattered all over the earth. So he's going to gather them all together. Uh, but that doesn't mean that just because you are a believer that you will make it into the remnant that he will place back in his land. They have to give a good report. They have to agree with what his word says about the end days, what it says about the book of Revelation, what it's for. It's for him to return to set up his kingdom. But it, he's returning for his bride who has made herself ready. And I pray that each of us, that's what, that's what, the desire in our heart is to make ourselves ready for his return. To do that, we have to come out of Babylon. Everything is in Babylon. I give you one for the church. Okay, believe me, they're in the false church. They, 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 hmm. they celebrate Christmas and Easter, pagan holidays, everything else. Come out of those things and come out of the land of Babylon, which he's fixing to destroy. We'll get that to another video. But the point being is, yes, I'm going to start, we'll start from the end. What? Our call is he's going to bring us together. Those that believe in his word about them. You can't be one of those if you don't believe that you can. It's by faith, okay, that we receive anything from, from Yahweh. So it's by our faith in his word, what he says about us. And in the end times, we don't believe in it. If we give a bad report, then we'll not go in. Now, you still be saved. You go to heaven. That's not what I'm talking about but so that you'll be that glorious bride that he wants to return for. I want to be that. And if you do, then please do me a favor. Like this video, share it, and subscribe. But please share it. Look, I'm going to get real serious in the next few videos. The first 28 I've been kind of playing around with. We have to get on it. We have to get the word out to his people. Look, the people that are seeking the truth. You ain't seeking the truth. This channel's not for you. Anyway, I love you. Pray that you be accounted worthy to escape these things coming upon the earth. Have a blessed day. And so until next time, see you then. You better subscribe and share.